Hey, it's Kami. Ego wo kiki tore na katta toki, anato wa dou shimasu ka? Yoku, could you repeat that? Ya, pardon, to itta phrase wo tsukaimasu ne. Demo aite ga inao shite kureta ato demo mada likai deki nai to, nando mo kiki kaisu no ga kimazu ku kanji te shimaru no de wa nai de shou ka. Berelitsu de wa so itta toki demo shizen ni kai wa tsuzukeru tame no レベルダウンテクニックと呼ばれるテクニックを教えていますこれをマスターできればコミュニケーション力が上がり英語を話すたびに新しいフレーズを学ぶことができるんです今日はベルリッツの教師マネージャーを務めるジェレミーさんにこのテクニックに関する質問を聞いてきました動画内ではレベルダウンテクニックの重要性と使い方を教えてくれています英語のコミュニケーション力向上を目指している方はぜひご覧くださいはい、ジェレミー、Thank you so much for joining me again for another video Thank you for having me So today we're going to be talking about understanding people better in a conversation and all of your advice that you have for people that are learning English But before we get started, could you please introduce yourself? Sure. My name's Jeremy. I'm、uh, from London and I also grew up in a German speaking country and I teach German and English. As I mentioned before, we're going to talk about the level down technique. Can you tell me what it's used for and why it's so useful? Well, I think it's one of those tools that are not only useful in the classroom but、um, more so in the real world.、Um, it's basically used to help you understand other people, whatever the problem is, whether they are speaking too fast or、um, you don't know the vocabulary or the situation is not clear or there's just missing information. And how does it work? What do you do? The main function is to let the other person know that、um, you don't understand and help them、mm -hmm. understand why you don't understand. So, the first thing to do is to interrupt the speaker as quickly as possible. Do you just say, like, could you repeat that? or? I wouldn't because you're just encouraging them to repeat exactly the same words at the same speed. You're not indicating where the problem lies. So,、mm. if you interrupt somebody because they are speaking too fast, then I would、uh, tell them so. I would say, Excuse me, could you speak more slowly, please? What if you still don't understand one of the words that they said? Well, in that case, again, you would interrupt them and say, Excuse me, what does. The word mean, or excuse me, what do you mean by that? Even after doing that, you can still be a little bit unsure. I think that's a problem we hear most of the time. Students will say, I said, excuse me, and then I said, pardon, and then I said, what does that mean? And I still don't understand. So, what if you're still unsure? Well, if you're still unsure,、uh, we tend to just ask them again.、Um, but、mm -hmm. my recommendation would be to confirm what you think they said. So basically, you're taking charge. Instead of every time you say, Could you repeat that? you're giving the other person the job of making it clear to you, right?、Mm -hmm. So、um, that can cause frustration, which is why we don't want to do it. But if we turn it around and say, Uh, so, do you mean this, for example? Then the other person can either say, yes, that's exactly what I mean, or no. And then at least they now have an idea what you misunderstood, and they have a better、uh, idea of how to explain it or give an example or something like that. What if you completely misunderstood somebody? Do you look silly? Is it embarrassing? No. I think in our current world, in our global business world, but in、uh, traveling and everything, I think we communicate more and more with people from all around the world、uh, in a variety of different languages. And、um, I think it has become important for both native and non native speakers to be able to understand each other. So I don't think. It is down to a Japanese or a Hungarian or a German person to learn good enough English in order to,、uh, to do business. I think it is just important for native speakers to learn how to slow down, how to explain yourself clearly, and so on. And 
the level down technique is not just for other languages. I think it works extremely well in your own language as well. And we often do so without thinking about it. Um, if we're speaking the same language, we will often say, I'm sorry, what do you mean by that? Or could you give me an example of that if we really don't understand something? So there's um, many different ways we already use the level uh, down technique to help us understand. All we're doing now is rolling it out across different languages and saying that it's still okay to do so. Say you're in a business meeting, would this kind of slow down the meeting? And like, would other participants get frustrated? That's a good question. And I think most people assume it would and therefore mm. refrain from doing it. But I believe that especially in a business meeting, we are there to complete a goal. We are there to negotiate something or gather information. Um, and if one party doesn't understand, then that goal is unachievable, right? Mm. I think sitting in the meeting, not understanding, going away, asking a colleague or uh, somebody else who was in the meeting to then explain it, and then going back and uh, conducting the business, I think that would be much, much slower. Um, mm. so I, I believe that right at the beginning, setting the expectations, um, I don't speak perfect English. Can you speak more slowly, please? I think um, sets uh, the tone for both sides, doesn't it? Does this ever happen in all English meetings with all native speakers? I think so, yes. Um, I remember an example when I worked in business in London, we would have weekly meetings with uh, teams around uh, Europe and other parts of the world. And because we were in and out of lots of meetings um, and often distracted, we were not always as concentrated as you would want to be in a meeting. So it actually happened quite often that somebody would uh, interrupt and say, I'm so sorry, could you repeat that? I wasn't listening. And the first time yeah. I, that I thought, my God, that's brave to say that. But I found in my experience, it was actually quite common uh, for people to stop listening, got distracted, had to answer the telephone or just didn't understand it. Yes, I've actually noticed that too sometimes when I'm having meetings and everyone is fluent in English. Uh, sometimes, especially for online meetings, you might get a sudden um, chat notification or a sudden email that's very urgent. And if someone suddenly asks you a question, uh, sometimes the instinct, especially if it's not your native language, is to say like, yes, I agree, mm. but it's perfectly normal to just say, oh, sorry, could you say that again? Or I didn't, I couldn't hear you the first time. It's totally fine, right? It's also, especially the last part, the confirming is something that we encourage people to do in business presentations during the Q&A because one of the biggest fears that presenters have is I can prepare my entire presentation, my slides and everything. I can practice, I can look really professional, but it always falls apart during the Q&A because I get scared that I don't understand. I maybe answer the wrong question and so on. So again, we would encourage uh, presenters to use that. Listen to the question, repeat it back to confirm that they've understood the question clearly because even just slightly veering off from the question could give a complete completely different answer and waste everybody's time. So very useful technique. And it's always better to completely understand rather than give someone the wrong answer and leave everybody confused, right? Absolutely. And it's much less embarrassing because you're taking responsibility, you're taking control instead of just saying, yes, yes, yes. What did he say? I'd really like to um, just get some advice or and examples of phrases that we can use in each situation. So you mentioned again that the level down technique is firstly stop the speaker and ask them to speak more slowly, check the specific meaning of like a word, and then of course confirming in your own words. Can I get some examples of phrases that um, you can use in those situations? I would always start with a signal. In, so instead of saying stop, you could say, excuse me, or pardon me, or I'm sorry. And then mm. with your request, could you speak more slowly? Or um, 
I don't understand what that means, or um, could you tell me what this word means? Especially、um, if you're in a very fast-paced conversation, sometimes、um, it can be difficult to say such a long sentence. Starting off with just "excuse me" or、oh, "sorry" is a really good way to just like interrupt them first, right? Yes, yes, and it's important to interrupt them because you don't want to wait too long. If you don't understand a, a whole block of text, for example, and you say "excuse,"、oh, uh, excuse uh, um, and then eventually get through "excuse me,"、uh, what does that mean? Then the speaker's what is going to have to repeat the entire flow again. So, <laughs> interrupting quickly but clearly, I think, is very important. The last thing I'd like to do before we say goodbye is to give a little demonstration of how to use the level down technique. Let's try and give a demonstration with me as the speaker and you using the technique. All right, so I'll start.、Um, I think we really need to start taking more initiative on whenever we're trying to find、Excuse、new vendors. To interrupt, could you speak more slowly? Oh yes, of course. I think we really need to start taking more initiative. When excuse me, what does initiative mean? Oh, initiative means、um, doing things proactively and faster than expected, and before anybody asks you to do it. So you mean working fast? Not quite. It's more like working faster than expected and. Doing things before someone tells you to do them. Ah,、oh, like starting a job before the boss asks you to do it. Yes, that's a great example of taking initiative. Thank you. No problem. So we need to take more initiative when we're looking for vendors in other countries. I agree. That's a good point. Okay, great. Thank you very much. My pleasure. So, Jeremy, before we say goodbye,、um, I wanted to ask if you have any final advice for people about using the level down technique and understanding speakers more in a conversation. I encourage people to use it as much as possible whenever they feel unsure about anything in any language, including their own. Um, I know at the beginning it feels a bit uncomfortable, and you don't want to be a nuisance or something like that. But I promise that if you use it a lot, you'll get used to it, and you'll find other people appreciate the fact that you're taking charge. I completely agree, and also I think that in the beginning, using new phrases to、um, understand people more. Can feel really unnatural, but practicing them at home so that they come out more easily is one of the best ways to get used to using the level down technique. Right? I agree. Yes. Thank you so much, and thanks to everybody watching. Good luck with your English study, and see you next time. Bye. Thanks, Kami. Bye. 動画をご覧いただきありがとうございました。ベルリッツブログにも英語学習アドバイスの記事が載っていますのでより詳しく知りたい方はぜひ参考にしてみてくださいこれからも英語の学習アドバイス動画や楽しく英語を学べるショーツなどを投稿していきます自信を持って英語を話せるようになりたい方はぜひチャンネル登録してくださいね See you!